So in previous videos, we've seen two different effects. We've seen what happens, uh, started to see what happens with AC circuits and when different elements are in those circuits. And we've also seen this whole concept of self-inductance. So what we're going to look at is the combination of the two. We're going to look at a simple circuit involving a varying voltage source and an inductor, a solenoid or a, 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 a element that has a bunch of um, loops of wire in it. And as we saw before in the capacitor circuit, that the voltage and the current don't necessarily have to follow uh, the same path exactly. One can be ahead of the other, but they're going to follow generally the same, um, the same general properties. So we put the inductor in the circuit and turn the circuit on, wait a little bit. And as the voltage changes, the voltage, as the voltage changes, we're going to get a change in current. And this Changing current gives us the whole uh, concept of self-inductance. So when the voltage changes, the voltage gets a rapid change. That means we have a very rapid change of current. And that rapid change of current will induce a back EMF, or an EMF that tries to impede the current flow. So this may sound a little bit uh, confusing, but when we look at the graphs, um, it's not too bad to understand. It just says, this, as the voltage is increasing, the voltage starts to ramp up. And as the voltage ramps up, we're going to not instantly cause the current to, to jump up with it. It's actually going to lag behind a little bit due to this induced EMF. And it's going to actually lag behind by 90 degrees. So the current lags the voltage, or the voltage leads the current, um, by 90 degrees. And that's because of the back EMF, or the induced EMF, that uh, causes the effective voltage that will drive the current to be a little bit lower. And that's all because of this induced magnetic field, uh, not the induced magnetic field, but rather the induced um, current and the induced EMF that gets set up in the coil itself. So for a pure inductive uh, circuit, the voltage leads the current, or the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees, or we say that we have phi is equal to 90 degrees. Now if we actually look at what happened to a capacitor, uh, we'll find that an inductor has a very similar associated property, that's reactance. We're going to call it the inductive reactance. And it's given by a relatively simple equation. It says the inductive reactance is given by omega times L, where L is the inductive or induction of the circuit or the inductance, and omega is what we'll call the angular frequency. And the angular frequency related, is related to the frequency again by a factor of two pi. So omega is equal to two pi times the frequency, such as 60 hertz for your wall outlet if you're in the US. Now when we relate this back to the uh, concept of voltage and current, just as in the capacitive uh, circuit, we're going to see that for an inductor, we're going to get a similar law to Ohm's law, where we have the RMF, RMS voltage is equal to the RMS current times this reactance, this inductive reactance this time. And actually in further videos and further complicated circuits we're going to see how resistance, reactance uh, play uh, together and how they interact. So look forward to that in future videos.